continue looking at rational expressions uh, to simplify, remember to divide out a binomial, they have to be exactly alike. So for our first problem here, x plus 4 and x plus 4, those are identical. They will divide out. When everything divides out, remember that it goes one time. For the next one, x plus 4 and x minus 4, you cannot divide these out. You're not allowed to take a piece off because of the signs in between. So this one is going to stay exactly like it is. There's nothing else you can do to it. The next one is okay. We can divide out because x minus 4 and x minus 4 are identical. They go into each other one time. And our last case, x plus 4 and 4 plus x, these are actually the same. With addition, you can switch the order. So these will divide out and they will go one time. Our next problems are special cases. Um, they are not identical. In the top one, we have a positive x. And in the denominator, we have a negative x. In the numerator, we have a negative 4. And the denominator, we have a positive 4. These are what we call negative identicals or opposites. They are exactly the same pieces with opposite signs. We can force these to be alike, and we do that by factoring out a negative 1. We can factor it out of either piece. And before we go there, just to recognize them, they will always be minus, and one of them will be turned around. We will take a negative 1, it's just a GCF, out of this one. It leaves negative 4 plus x. I'm just going to rewrite. Now if you look closely, x minus 4 and negative 4 plus x are actually the same. They both have positive x and they have a minus 4. So they can divide out. Notice your negative 1 did not divide out. So your answer is negative 1. So for our next problem, we notice these both have an x and a 2. One has a positive x, one has a negative x, one has negative 2, one has positive 2. And one of them is turned around. So these are opposites. We can force them to match. We'll do that by taking out a negative 1. That will leave a negative 2 plus x. You've pulled it out of both terms. And now, the x minus 2 and the negative 2 plus x are actually the same. You're still left with your negative 1. So 1 over negative 1 or negative 1. When you've done a few of these, you start to recognize them and you can bypass this step and realize it will be negative 1. If there aren't other factors in there, they're kind of easy to see. So let's look at a few problems and see if we can recognize opposites. For our first problem, x minus 6 over 6 minus x. These are opposites. They have opposite signs. Positive x, negative x. Negative 6, positive 6. So this is equal to negative 1. The next problem, x minus 7, 7 minus x. Those are opposites. Equals negative 1. The third one, be careful. You have x plus 6 and x minus 6. You don't have both minus and you don't have one of them turned backwards. These are never going to match. They're not opposites. With the x's, they have the same sign. The 6's have opposites, but the x have the same. You can't make those match. It's going to stay exactly like it is. For the fourth one, notice these are both minus, and one of them is turned backwards. So let's just check. We have positive x, negative x, negative a, positive a. Those are opposites. That will be a negative 1. With other factors involved, you won't always see the opposites right away. Like this problem, we don't necessarily see opposites right away. Uh, so we'll go ahead with normal factoring. We can do a GCF on the numerator. We can take out a 2x. And that leaves us x minus 2. In the denominator, we can take out a 5 for a GCF. And that leaves 2 minus x. 
Now you might notice that we have some opposites. These pieces are opposites. So they can divide out. Remember, it gives us a negative 1. So this will give us a negative 2x over 5. And it doesn't matter where you put that negative. We have one more problem here to reduce. And what you might notice first is you have a difference of squares on the numerator. So we'll factor that. That gives us an x plus 5 and an x minus 5. Uh, there's nothing we can do right away on the denominator. You might notice though that you do have opposites now. These two are opposites. So that piece will cancel out. It's going to give us a negative 1. We can write the negative outside the whole parentheses or you can distribute it through. It doesn't matter. Either answer is correct. So leave it whichever way you would like. We have one last multiplication problem in this section. Uh, the factoring is going to take a bit of work, so I will work on the side again. First I'll work on the 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. That will go into two sets of parentheses. Different signs. We can try 6 and 1 or 3 and 2. On the other side, we can try 1 and 5 or 5 and 1. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and give you the ones that work. Uh, let's use the 3x and 2x. And if we do the 1 and 5, I think the signs are wrong, so let's just double check. So I have a minus 15x plus 2x gives me a minus 13x. Notice I wanted plus 13x. Remember the way to fix those is just switch the signs. So I should have had a minus there and a plus here and then it would work. So I have 3x minus 1 and 2x plus 5. That denominator will also be a bit of work. So we'll work on it on the side. 2x squared plus x minus 10 will also give us two sets of parentheses with different signs. We'll use 2x and x. On the other side we can try 1 and 10, 2 and 5, 5 and 2, or 10 and 1. And I believe the 5 and 2 work. So let's try that. We check minus 4x plus 5x gives a plus 1x. So that is the correct choice. For our others, they'll be a little easier to factor. On our numerator, we can take out a GCF. We can take a 5x. And that will leave 2 minus x. Denominator, there's actually nothing to do. Um, the exponent is 1 and there is no GCF. Right. Now we will try to cancel anything that we can. So we can go on our diagonals. The two, 3x minus 1 will divide out. Uh, vertically, the 2x plus 5 will divide out. And if you notice it, you have opposites here. X minus 2 and 2 minus X. Pieces with exactly opposite signs. Positive X, negative X, 2, negative 2. They will divide out, but remember it goes negative one time. Right, so all we have left on the numerator is our negative 1 and 5X. And nothing is left in the denominator. You don't have to write a 1 in the denominator.